With the Britpart all-wheel drive Safari Championship moving into the second half of the season, the focus will be on the championship points. And with three different winners in the first four rounds of the season, as well as a variety of names gracing those podium places, things are still very much open at the top of the results. Alex Holford, winner at round three, comes into this round with a very slim one-point advantage over Nick Painter, who himself has taken two victories so far including the previous round in Minehead. Chris Bird, our only other event winner this season, isn't present this weekend. So will we see a new name on the top of the results? Or will Nick Painter continue his winning ways into the second half of the season? Round five of the championship, sponsored by Philpot Demolition, Country House Foods and AB Trailer Hire, takes the crews to Ilfracombe combination of fast field tracks up and down the hillside and a more technical woodland section as well. It certainly was going to provide something for everyone this weekend. On to the first of the morning's runs then and it will be a new face at the top of our leaderboard. Paul Rowlands leads the way after run three with a 10 second advantage in that position leading the six I class at this stage two. For Nick Painter and Ian Archer, it will be second place. The times were of course close, not far from that leading position. A spin on the second run of the day wasn't going to help with the overall times though. This is probably where those 10 seconds had been lost. The results could have been a whole lot closer. For Mike Bakewell, it will be third place. Another good start for him despite not watching the times and of course not getting caught up in any of the battles as a result. The pace was good, although the time to the leading couple of cars would be just less than two minutes at this stage. For Tim and Jasmine Philpott, it will be the lead in the seven I-Class and fourth place overall. It wasn't without its problems though, getting caught out by this ditch in the second run of the morning, which didn't look like much, but most likely felt pretty significant from inside that car. Dave Hooper and Lee Higginson would have a bit of a problem with a misfire on the opening run of the day. They soon cleared that up, but they'd have to build the confidence on the wet grass to start bringing those times down. They lead the way in class eight at this stage, fifth place overall. James and Philippa Tennant were having a trouble-filled morning. A spin on the wet grass of the opening run, followed by a visit to the same ditch that had caught Tim Philpott out. And the trouble wasn't over there, breaking a CV joint on the third run of the morning, which resulted in the loss of the drive shaft. And not having a spare meant a long walk around the course, looking for the pieces to try and get things back together again. Despite all of these problems, though, they still managed to lie in sixth place on the overall leaderboard, second in the 8i class. Ian Parry comes into this round on the back of some good results already this season, lying fifth place in the championship standings and within sight of those podium places. This weekend would start much the same, seventh place after the morning's runs and just less than a minute back from Tennant at this stage. Daryl Hardy and Rob Golding will be having a good run to lie third in class eight at this stage, pushing the car as usual and causing a little damage along the way, but nothing that would stop them going into the next runs of the day. Eighth place overall for the pair. A handful of seconds back from Hardy will be Alex Freeman. 12 seconds, the difference between the pair at this stage with Freeman putting in a faster time on the third run of the day. So it will be all to play for over the next few runs. We'd see this battle play out, surely. And rounding out the top 10 were Alex Day and Nick Beadle. They were enjoying the course and finding some good lines. A spin on the opening run of the day wasn't helping their overall times, but 10th place was theirs for now. Unfortunately, the venue would claim its fair share of crews on the first runs of the day. We lose Rob Scone early on when parts of the engine decided to part company with the car. Sadly, they didn't manage to get a clean run in before the problems. Subsequent retirement, the result. 
In those results, though, just outside the top 10, it will be 11th place for Ashley Bartlett, leading the way in Class 2 at this stage as well. Adrian and Chris Beer will be having some problems this morning. A lack of acceleration on the opening run put down to issues from a recent engine rebuild. But they'd be getting it sorted. Sadly, though, a misfire towards the end of the next couple of runs would also slow those times down a little. 12th place overall for now. For Niall Banyard, it will be 13th place overall. A little way back from the class lead and lying second place in class two at this point in the event. Victoria Vaughan and Matthew Rowland, meanwhile, had made some changes to the car for this round, including the gear ratios. And it was making a big difference. The times were looking good, and for once, the morning seemed to be going without issue. They end run three with 14th place overall, seventh in the class. Andy Kent and James Withers will be just over a minute back from Vaughan. 15th place overall, lying third in the 8i class at this stage as well. Things were not going quite to plan for Richard Mayer Barron and Claire Golding. They would get caught out by the same ditch that had caught a handful of others out. But unfortunately, they struggle more than most to get the car going straight away. They do get going, but lose a handful of time in the process, continuing to take 16th place and lead class one at the end of run three, though, so it wasn't all over yet. Michael Tilney and Ryan Pinekey were not having the best of runs, it had to be said. Once again, the reliability letting them down rather than the speed. Times on the opening run of the morning were up there with the front runners, but sadly, they'd end the morning with 17th place overall. Things were also going pretty badly at this stage for Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith. They break part of the suspension on the opening run of the morning, meaning that they get a maximum. They do get it fixed in order to continue, and at least the bad luck out of the way early in the event. 18th place overall for now. Sadly for Alex Holford and Gwen Adair, the win would be out of the question this weekend. They lead the radiator cap off before the opening run, resulting in steam that was mistaken for smoke and causing enough of a distraction to cause a missed gear and a loss of drive. All resulting in a maximum and 19th place overall after three runs. And for Keith Wilde, it will be a very short start to the day, pulling over not far after the start of the opening run with problems. He would get things going again, though, ending the morning with 20th place on the leaderboard. Meanwhile, rounding off the finishers this morning would be Mark Gregory, 21st place overall and lying 8th in Class 8, too. Tony Rooney would win the award for the shortest run on the event, sadly retiring just off the start line of the opening run and going no further. We'd also lose Lizzie Jones on run three. Times before that were looking good, but sadly the day would come to an end, close to the end of the third run of the day. Oshin Riley would unfortunately end his event on the opening run as well, gaining a maximum and going no further. And we'd also lose Mark Kelly, the second run of the day being the end of the road for him. So with the course this weekend taking its toll, it's a story of attrition. It's a new face though at the top of the results, but those regulars were close behind and still ready to challenge for that victory. On to the next runs of the day then, and there would indeed be some change to our results. Nick Painter and Ian Archer take over the lead of the event now, despite getting in trouble for continually knocking down the arrows on the course. They'd have a good advantage there now, and we'll be feeling confident that victory could be within grasp today. Um, yeah, not too bad. Been going well. Um, we seem to like hitting the markers, which is um, much to Bruce's dismay. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah, not bad. Car's fine. Uh, we had a bit of a... Going down through um, the first big drop off, we did that a bit hard and took out another marker and stopped dead. But um, yeah, all good, really. The reason for that change around at the top then would be problems for this man, Paul Rowlands. He has a problem in run five, coasting to a stop, eventually getting things going again, but losing around five valuable minutes and dropping down to fourth place overall. 
Yeah, not too bad. Um, it's the first time I've been to the audio drive club. Um, a bit different, more my thing. We've got trouble with the can-ams. We can't keep the front diffs in them. So um, I thought the diffs exploded. And um, also on lap five, we had a belt blow. We lost, lost us five minutes. Um, other than that, I was in the lead. It was just quite impressed, really, because first time with the audio drive club. But yeah, really enjoying it. No real issues for Mike Bakewell, though. He takes advantage of the problems up ahead to move into second place. The gap to the lead wasn't looking like it would be possible to change around, barring natural disaster or something slightly less. And we could see either of those things here in this series. But as we've just seen, anything can happen. And Bakewell would be there, ready to pick up the pieces, should that be the case. Oh, not too bad. A bit slippy on the first run. Broke a bonnet pin on the last run, so I've just done that. So it's getting drier out there, getting quicker and rougher. Tim and Jasmine Philpott avoid any more trips into the ditches over the next few runs. Ending run six with third place now, moving up the podium places and just 20 seconds back from Bakewell at this stage too. Ah, well, we, we had a very good first lap, but it seems to have gone downhill a bit since then. But we've we've picked up now. We've got the hang of a few of the difficult bits of the course, we hope. And uh, we, we're feeling a lot more comfortable with uh, with this track now. And uh, we're really enjoying it. Really good course. Uh, the fact that a bit of sun the drawing out nicely makes it good stuff. We're really enjoying it. With some makeshift repairs to the car complete, it will be fifth place for James and Philippa Tennant. Still going well considering the problems, and a good result was now looking likely, providing the repairs held to the end of the event. Oh, it's been, uh, been, been, been frantic. Uh, we lost the engine going into the first hazard, put, put it in low gear, the wheels locked, and we just slid in the hazard too hard. So that was a bad start to the day, and it hasn't really got much better. And we've lost a drive shaft, as in lost it completely, but we've uh, found another shaft, which you think will do. It bent the steering, mashed up the, the drive shaft bolts on the way out. So, yeah, it's been a bit hectic, and uh, so we've got to put about... Uh, we've got seven laps in about three hours, which will be uh, challenging. <laughs> Dave Hooper and Lee Higginson were starting to get their confidence up on the wet grass now, and it was showing some good times and continuing to lead the way in class eight, as well as lying in sixth place overall. Didn't like the course at first. We walked it yesterday and I didn't like it, but after driving them, it's quite enjoyable. Um, doing right, I think we're f we were fifth overall and first in class, so just get to the end now. There'd be no change on the results though for Ian Parry. He continues to lie in seventh place overall, as well as second place in the class, just less than a minute back from Hooper. Well, I brought my braver bottom along, and uh, as you can see under the back of the vehicle there, there's a piece of the bonnet, because I went in the first hole <laughs> that bravery put me in. But uh, no, other than that, I got a little bit of a little bit of a steering issue. I got a Got a nearly new ball, ball bearing race giving up on me, which is a little bit of a odd uh, jar in the steering every now and again. But now we're having fun, trying to not slide around too much and trying to catch up the guy that's winning the class. He's uh, he's got a braver bottom on than me this morning. Fair play to him. <laughs> Daryl Hardy and Rob Golding were once again getting their runs in early possibly wanting to get the best of the conditions they could. Sadly, however, they'd have already suffered a broken wheel and an exhaust so far, so things were not going completely to plan. Eighth place overall for the pair. There wouldn't be any change though to ninth place. Alex Freeman continuing to lie in that position, as well as fourth place in class eight. The time's consistent now. The previous three runs only gaining a single second at a time. And there'd be no change to 10th place at this stage either. Alex Day and Nick Beadle continuing to hold on to that position and just happy that they were damage free as well, unlike this time last year, remember, when they hit a tree. No change to the results at this stage for Ashley Bartlett, continuing to lead the way in class two with a good margin as well in that position, as well as lying in 11th place overall. With the misfire now cured, put down to leaking coolant in the ignition coil, things should have been getting better for Adrian and Chris Beer. Sadly though, they break the suspension on run five, thankfully not losing them too much time. They do get things fixed and continue to 12th place overall. Alex Holford and Gwen Adair were starting to put in some good times now that the car was all fixed. Sadly, the overall result would be out of the question, but damage limitation would be the order of the day. They tried to salvage as many championship points as they could this weekend. 
There's more attrition as well, some more change to the results in 14th as we lose Victoria Vaughan on run 5. She crashes out of the event. A precautionary trip to the hospital wouldn't reveal any problems though, other than a shaken crew and a damaged car. They would hopefully be back out again for the next round in a few weeks' time. Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith would be another crew looking to salvage something from this weekend after a maximum on run 1. 14th place overall for now and 3rd in the 8i class. Uh, not very well. First lap we uh, broke a uh, lower wishbone, uh, took a maximum. Uh, just out there now trying to catch up and uh, keep some championship points. But uh, going really well now we are going and enjoying it. <laughs> and for Andy Kent and James Withers, it will be fourth place in the 8i class. Although still around a minute and a half back from Edwards in that position up ahead. No change in the class for Niall Banyard. Second place there, a little way back from the class lead and lying in 16th place overall. Unfortunately, it was mechanical issues getting the better of Michael Tilney and Ryan Pinkey. They're forced to pull over on run five, retiring when the engine overheated on the car. Sadly, an ongoing problem and one that they needed to get to the bottom of in order for those results to start coming through as well as their pace. Richard Mayer, Barron and Claire Golding managed to stay away from any ditches to end run six with 17th place overall on the results. The car certainly wasn't the fastest here, but as always, the crew seemed to be the ones having the most fun. Lovely. I'm glad it's dried out now. We're managing to get our times down a bit. We've got a bit of an issue with the engine stalling every now and then. That's just the bumpy, rough stuff. And as you clearly saw, we had a bit of a navigational debate, which took us into a ditch. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but it's great fun. It's always a lovely course here. And it's, it's just another course that's laid out fantastically well. So rounding out our results at this stage will be Keith Wilde, recovering from his earlier issues to put in some good times, but sadly nothing that could be done to gain back that earlier time lost. We lose Mark Gregory as well in these runs, unfortunately going out of the event on run four. So with this attrition-filled event reaching its final runs, it's all change at the top, but with four more runs remaining, things could certainly change. On to the final results of the event then, and it will be a finish at least for Richard Mayer Barron and Claire Golding. They do take a maximum on the final run of the day after running out of fuel midway round the course. For Niall Banyard, there will be no change to the class result, ending the event with second place in class two and taking 14th overall. For Andy Kent and James Withers, it will be 13th place to end the event. The pair taking second in the 8i class as well. Adrian and Chris Beer leave the problems of the morning behind them to have a good afternoon setting some good times as the day went on and taking 12th place overall, as well as 5th place in Class 8. Once again, no change for Ashley Bartlett, ending the event just outside the top 10 with 11th place and taking that Class 2 victory in the process. Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith having a good run after their earlier misfortunes to get themselves up into 10th place by the finish. A good end to what started out as a pretty bad day for the pair, as they also take the 8i class victory. And it would be much the same story for Alex Holford and Gwen Adair. They take the 7i class win this weekend and manage to get themselves into 9th place overall. The weekend certainly hadn't gone to plan, but this was a good comeback after their run one maximum. Eighth, despite the small problems for Daryl Hardy and Rob Golding, would be a relatively trouble-free run to the finish in the end, as they end the event with eighth place overall, fourth in Class 8. Alex Day and Nick Beadle will be thankful to get to the end without any damage. They have a trouble-free run to end the event with seventh place overall, third in the class. Sadly for Paul Rowlands though, there would be nothing he could do to get back up to the lead of the event. A further problem on run eight would add to that further, meaning he ends the event with sixth place overall. Without the problems, could we have seen a new winner on his debut in the championship? Sadly, we'd also lose Tim and Jasmine Philpot later on in the day, on run seven to be exact, when they parked the car up with some damage midway through the course. 
So with the problems for some, it meant a fifth place finish for Ian Parry. A good end to the event for this man, taking second place in Class 8 with that result as well. It would also be a good weekend for Dave Hooper and Lee Higginson. Their consistency and reliability meant that they were able to finish just outside the podium places with fourth place overall, taking the Class 8 victory in the process. The repairs made earlier in the day held out for James and Philippa Tennant. They get to the end of the event, and most importantly, they do it with third place overall. A great result for the pair and another podium to add to that collection in what have been a good season so far. And indeed, it will be another podium too for Mike Bakewell. Second place was his this weekend after a relatively trouble-free day and consistent good times all day long. But that does mean it's victory for Nick Painter and Ian Archer, the pair taking the win by a comfortable amount after the problems for Rollins. That win means Painter moves into the lead of the championship now with a slim margin of just nine points. So once again, this exciting series delivers. With round five complete, here's a reminder of those final overall positions. With the win for Painter securing him that championship lead going into the next round. Yeah, good, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, we um, had a few issues, but uh, we overcome those and cracked on, good. Yes, yeah, second, it was a bit of a surprise. I got a rough idea halfway through the day. 10 settle penalty, first thing didn't help, but yeah, it's a good result. Well pleased, come back again. Um, well, it didn't look, didn't look like it middle of the day, certainly. No, it's been, uh, it's been a challenging day. And, uh, but the, apart from you know, the, the, the problems this morning, the car has been fantastic, it's been great fun to drive. Best off-road course we've got, I think. I think this place is just just great. But uh, yeah, I know Domini's catching up with me, and uh, ten, ten, 10 runs is yeah, I'm I'm wrecked now. But uh, very happy with the place, and uh, it's been a healthy competition. I was, was getting close to the big well, so yeah, good day out. That next round of the championship was scheduled to be a sweet lamb, but with livestock issues on the site, the championship has been forced to change venue returning to Walters Arena on Sunday the 20th of August, giving the crews just two weeks to get the cars re-prepped, ready for action. As always, we will be there to bring you all of the action, hopefully with a little less rain than our first visit to the venue at the start of the season, remember that? In the meantime, you can keep up to date with all of the coverage on our social media. Thank you for watching.